Hey folks, well, you know, a lot of people still have these uh, 88 through 98 and early 99 uh, Silverado and Tahoe, Blazer, Yukon, Suburban versions of this GMT 400 platform. It's a very popular truck, still is. And these trucks are fairly durable. In my experiences, they're, they are fairly durable. Uh, they do have their problems, little mainly minor problems. Uh, things like door handles and mirrors breaking and this, that, and the other. Nothing major, but uh, one sore spot on these trucks seems to be the seats. And as you can see, I'm having my own set of problems with the seats in this Blazer. I showed you another video of the driver's seat just totally trashed on this this truck. So uh, what I was doing is I picked up a driver's seat from a later model uh, vehicle at the junkyard and then as it turns out I had to just go ahead and use the entire seat and I kind of like the way the seat looked it matched pretty good and it's a power seat I'll show you that in a, a later video of the completed seat installation but I thought one thing I would do is make a video of uh, doing kind of a comparison and contrast in these seats the later style and the earlier style seats and kind of show you what you're up against if you want to put them in a for instance, put later seats in an earlier model vehicle and upgrade them. Uh, I know a lot of people like to do that. And these seats do look pretty nice. Uh, I've got that one turned over, but this is the original. I'm on the passenger seat now. This is the original passenger seat. And this seat really didn't have any problems, but it was missing the cover and the, uh, the seat back release back here has been broken off of it. So. Uh, I just went ahead and picked up the other matching bucket seat. This is a out of a 95, I believe it was. I'll just give you a quick view of that seat. It's in pretty good shape for a used seat. It's been cleaning it up a little bit, but let's let's look at the bottoms of these seats. There's been a lot of questions in forums about how to change the seats around and things like that. So let's get into that a little bit. I've already worked on this seat. And I'll tell you what I've done here. Uh, first off, we've got a little bit of terminology we need to talk about. Uh, you have the seat itself, which is this. This seat has had, this is just the seat. It has a frame in it, metal seat, uh, seat frame. You can see the edges of it here. That's where the upholstery attaches. That's what keeps the seat together. It serves as the mounting points for the, uh, the riser. Now, this is the riser here, this metal part that bolts to the floor, this is not all one piece that comes off. You see that assembly over there? That is the riser that was originally on this 95 seat and it's a little bit more of a complicated arrangement because even though it's a manual seat, it has, uh, not only does it have seat back release, so when you pull the button you can get in the back of the, into the back seat easier, but this one also slides forward and I really did not care for the look of that, so uh, I just went ahead and decided to use my original risers off this 93 seat. So in essence, uh, this is a very easy swap. For one thing, the seats physically, and I'm talking about bucket seats, I can't talk about bench seats or 60-40 seats, split seats, I don't, you know, that's a way to put bucket seats in those. but. That's not going to be the subject of this video because I don't have that in front of me and I can't tell you how to do that. But as far as bucket seats, swapping bucket seats, it's just bolt in the fare all the way. I'll tell you, tell you more about it and show you what I mean. Uh, first thing is, uh, these seats are, they bolt in to the floorboard, the riser, this is the riser, that's the riser right there. The riser physically bolts to the floor on any of the 88 through 98 and early 99s. The bolt holes are there, they're all the same. We're talking about bucket seats here. So that's no problem. And as a matter of fact, the riser, this assembly, you know, you see there, it's got little stains where those have been bolted onto that seat. They also uh, bolt right onto this seat. And, um, what I found though that'll snag you is when you go to change these around, you'll notice there's two different positions on where these seats can bolt on. 
onto the, uh, I'm sorry, the riser can bolt onto the seat. You see I've got them bolted in there and there's also adjacently, that's where the original riser over there was bolted on and then over here, same deal. So I put these on actually um, in those right hand set of holes there. I bolted them in originally and I was having problems. I thought I was going to have to lose this piece of trim right here. But as it turns out, um, you don't. You just go ahead and move them back over to the right hand set. I guess you'd say left hand set of holes if you're looking at the seat this direction. So that slides the seat when the seat's in the truck is then slide it over towards the door a little bit, which I don't think will be a problem. Now, uh, I haven't got this in my truck yet, so if I do put it in and uh, that's going to be a problem, then I will let you know in the comments. But everything just bolts right in, just factory original. Uh, the bolts just go right in in the right spots. Uh, you got a spring here that uh, I've actually not got that spring. I've got too far over. It's actually supposed to, supposed to go by right here, so I'm going to move that. But this little kind of helper spring, um, it just everything just fit together perfectly. The release all works, and even able to put this piece of trim back on. And this hides the tilt, the back tilter, when you pull this over here, when you, that access, see that little bob there, that releases and lets the back of the seat go, or the seat, that's probably going to actually, I think on this one, um, that is probably going to uh, slide the seat up. So that may or may not still work, I'm going to find out about that. I've got a cable over here too, so we may end up losing that feature I don't know or may have to work to get that on there so uh, anyway it should still it probably won't slide but the back should still release just like it always has so that's no problem and you also have on this one I, I have to issue a correction in another video I may have called this little thing here a uh, sensor for the airbag well that's totally incorrect what this is, this is a, a little air pump. <laughs> it's a little air pump for the, uh, it's got a lumbar over here. So I've just, I haven't, I'm not going to hook this up because that seat didn't have that. Sorry for the noise. The seat didn't have that, so I'm just going to ignore that. I'm going to take that harness out of the way. And if you have a 12 volt source in there, you can hook it up and it should work fine. But uh, that's basically what you're up against. It's a real easy swap. So, I, like I said, the reason I wanted to use these risers is because I like the looks of them better. They match their originally what was in the truck. So. And so you can see that's still a pretty good match between the 93 color and the 95 color. So this should look pretty good. But that's what you got going, guys. That's all you got to do. You basically just unbolt it off the bottom of the seat and swap it over to the new seat if you want to change those risers. Now, those risers would have worked in that truck. There's no reason, specific reason, that I took those that riser out except that. Um, I'm sure that neighbor does that on purpose. He lets that dog out on purpose to aggravate me. But, Boom. But anyway, that's what you got going, guys. The only reason, let me finish up my thought there on that. That riser had some problems. It had a broken cable on it. So I decided to not use it. I'm going to use my one. So there we go. So if you got any questions, please feel free to ask me, and I'll be glad to help you with it. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.